Well, hello, hello, Dixie Belle paint fans. How are you today? It is Melissa from the Top Drawer RVA. Sorry, had to spit that one out there. And I am joining you live on the Dixie Belle paint page today. It is Wednesday. It is my play with paint day, 3 p.m. Every Wednesday, I'm live on the Dixie Belle paint page to open up all the paint, sit on the floor and have some fun. So I'm glad that you've come along to join me today. Welcome, welcome and thank you for joining. If you are a new follower, please let me know where you're watching from below. I'd love to see where everybody's tuning in from. And we will jump right in and get started. What do you say? Sound like fun? I've got a little cutie for you today. Can you see that little sneak peek behind me over there? See that little ombre beauty hopping in behind me? This is what we're gonna do today. And because I have a double set, I thought I might as well practice this morning, get my technique down, figure out what I'm gonna do, and then we can play with some paint. Hello, Anna, how are you? All right, everybody, so this is what we're gonna do today. All right, so we have got a little cutie nightstand. This little nightstand is kind of like um, an ombre blend. I like to call it ombre. Really, it's just a blended color scheme of paint, okay? I have three colors on here today, and we're gonna do the same look over on this nightstand so that you can learn how to blend your paint as well. All right, let's jump in. So at the bottom here on the little feet, what you're seeing, I guess it's maybe easier if I sit on this side. Let's see where you can see. I'm gonna crawl around on the floor, find the best position <laughs> to show you all of the fun things. So on the feet, you can see the darkest blue right here. So the darkest blue on this, on this piece is mermaid tail. Mermaid tail is a gorgeous bluish green color, and I've added that to every single corner as well as the feet on this piece, all right? So that is the darkest color that is on our piece. Then it's gonna come up and it's gonna move into the gulf. The gulf is just a shade lighter, and we're in between kind of a blue and a yellow, and I really wanna kind of pull the yellow and blue together. So this is my happy medium to pull my yellow and my blue together, all right? So we've got mermaid tail in the gulf, then we're gonna come up and we're gonna use a color that I never used before today. I'm a newbie when it comes to this color. I'm not the biggest yellow fan, y'all, but this is a custom order for a customer who gave me a color scheme that she really wanted to achieve today. Um, she mentioned teal, she mentioned the beautiful yellow, and a little bit of beige and a little bit of green. So this is a perfect combo. So today we're also gonna be using Rebel Yellow. Rebel Yellow is this kind of darker yellow that you're seeing in here around the edges. So what's in the middle? Can anybody guess? Anybody guess the middle color right there? <laughs> this is actually buttercream, okay? Buttercream is not really yellow. It's a very nice, creamy, buttery cream color. It's not, I wouldn't call it yellow at all, but it's a great way to kind of make a base for all of these colors to pull together. Because on their own, they're all kind of bright, but when you put them all together like this, it is a beautiful, beautiful ombre blend. So I've done this on the sides as well as the front. Let me see if I can turn it and then push it back out of the way. See the side as well? So it's blended on the sides as well as the front. So this is what we're gonna do today. All right, let's jump in. Let's get started, shall we? When I have my glasses on, I can see what you're saying. If I do miss any comments today, Dixie Bell is on here with me. They can answer any of the questions today as well. Um, or I have some really smarty pants followers on here and they like to get in here and help me answer questions, which I greatly appreciate. I love it when people can chime in um, and answer the questions because there's so many people out here that are super knowledgeable about Dixie Bell paint. But I do promise you that when this is all finished, I will come back in and watch the whole thing and answer all the questions in case I missed anything. All right, let's play with some paint, shall we? And if you came in late, my name is Melissa. I am Dixie Bell's newest brand ambassador. All right, let's go. Here is our little cabinet. What have I done to this cabinet so far? Well, first of all, of course, I cleaned it with white lightning. White lightning is your cleaner for all your things, for your metal, for your hardware, for your pieces. It comes in a powder-like little jar and you're gonna disperse it into water. I actually disperse mine into a recyclable old spray bottle with warm water, spray it, clean it, make sure all the grease is off, all the stuff is off, and you are ready for paint, okay? I then came in with my Boss. I use Boss in clear. Well, why did I use Boss? I just wanted to make sure, because when I was cleaning this piece, I felt that the tannins might be a little bit bleeding through if I went really light with the lightest color, okay? Because when I was cleaning, what was coming off into my rag was still saying a little bit orange, a little bit red, um, and I wanted to make sure that that was gonna stay off my piece. I don't want that to happen. So I came in here with my boss in clear and added one full even coat of boss. I did not boss the top because the top of these pieces, and I'm not gonna do it today <laughs> because I've done gel stain on like the past 
five lives, I think, on Dixie Belle paint page. You all have seen me do it so many times. Super boring. Um, I'm going to be staining the top with walnut, which is kind of a little bit deeper color than this. And we are going to have that nice deep color on the top and that beautiful ombre base. Remember the one behind me? You can see that right there. Imagine it with a really pretty deep top. I am then going to put the hardware back on, which is original to the piece. And it is really pretty and kind of a burnished gold hardware, which looks really pretty and original. I like to keep original hardware when I can. I think it makes a piece look better all the way around. You know, like it just looks more authentic and more true to the time period. And if you can recycle the hardware, I'm going to be cleaning this hardware with white lightning when I'm finished putting it back on. Let's paint. You ready people? Are you ready? All right, let's do this. So today, remember the four colors that we're gonna be using today. Wow, it's bright. Let's see if I can make it a little bit better. Eh, I'll take it. Blows out all the wrinkles. <laughs> all right, so the four colors we're using today. Mermaid tail in the gulf. Then we're gonna come into this rebel yellow and buttercream. I have a separate brush on the floor for each color. Why do I have a separate brush for each color? Because I wanna make sure that my colors are not gonna be contaminated. We're not going to pull them together until we're ready. And when we do pull it together, you're going to require a spray misting bottle filled with water. This is gonna be your tool to help blend the colors together. So I am going to actually start in the middle today. Normally I start on the feet and work my way up, but here's the thing. When you're working with a color that is a little bit more light, any of the colors that are light colors, they take a little bit more paint than some of the darker pigmented colors. So a color like in the navy that's nice and dark and rich and blue is really only gonna need probably a coat and a half of paint to get your full coverage. But when you're using a light color, like this gorgeous buttercream, it's gonna take a little bit more paint. So I wanna make sure that my paint is gonna get dry enough to do a little bit of ombre blending and show you the final look today. So I'm just gonna get on here and lay down over top of my wood that has already been bossed, some buttercream. So how's everybody doing today? It's September. Kids are back in school. Are your kids virtual? Are they homeschooled? How are you holding up? I give you props, moms. Give you all the props out there because I'm currently home with my 11 year old and she is doing a wonderful job at virtual school. She's doing great so far. I couldn't be more proud at her ability to get up there on the computer and have a long day of being logged into the computer. It's not something I like to do. I'd rather sit on the floor and get messy with paint, but she's doing good so far. So if you're at home with those kiddos, I feel for you. I know it's a struggle. We're all, we're all figuring it out as we go along, right? That's all we can do. Maybe they can let me teach some art. <laughs> I'll hop on and do some live teaching Dixie Bell painting with kids. It's a lot of fun actually. You should get the kids involved. So this is buttercream. All I'm doing is kind of laying it down. If you're having trouble getting your paint into these little details down here, because these are pretty thick ornate moldings that were original to the piece, just kind of make your brush a little bit more wet. It allows the paint to be a little bit more thinly applied and get into all these cracks because I don't want to see any of the wood color. This is all going to be a beautiful ombre blend. The brush I'm using right now is my mini. It's the mini. It's not my usual go-to brush, but when you're in a pinch and you need a brush for each color, you work with what you got, right? <laughs> it works just the same as my medium flat, which is my usual go-to um, that I love for blending. It's my favorite brush. So how we doing? We're doing good. Hello, Susan. Hello. So this buttercream is just going to go on in the middle. All right. I'm just going to kind of put it all up here where I think it's going to live and start to get it on here so that it gets dry because it is going to need a tiny bit more paint. It is going to need a little bit more TLC. It just is the way that it is. Lighter colors always take more coats of paint. And if you're a furniture painter, you know, this is true. So I'm just going to lay it down and start to get it a little bit dry. So what do we think of this little color combination? This, this pretty creamy yellows and the really pretty mermaid tail blues. It's kind of nice. I haven't done it before. I'm, I'm a little bit surprised at how much I'm liking it. I think it's starting to look really I don't know, it just looks really blendy and pretty when you look at the piece behind me. I really like that kind of 
soft look to it. I will be adding gold to these pieces. When it is dry, I will be coming in and using my gilding wax in gold. And the gilding wax is the new gilding wax that will be released in October of 2020. So hang tight, y'all. The gilding wax is coming back. Don't be afraid. It will return and it's better than ever. Trust me, better than ever. You're gonna want it. I see puppy dog hair. Let's take that off. So this buttercream is just going on in the middle. Da, 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 da. Get it where it needs to go. So remember, I'm not painting the top. I'm gonna be doing um, the no paint gel stain walnut on the top. And if you want to see me, I will apply this live, but I will not have enough time today to do all of this. So you're gonna to have to come over and join me on my Facebook page, which I did link above my head. And you can come over and follow me at the top drawer RBA. And I will show you how to use gel stain because I put it on everything. I put it on like every piece, y'all. It's all over the place for me. Okay, so now that my buttercream is on there, it's looking good where it's gonna live. Um, should we do the sides today? I wonder if we're gonna have enough time. Let's see how much room we have to turn this little piece around. So many things on the floor, so much stuff. This is why I paint on the floor to keep it, keeping it real down here, y'all. Keeping it messy. Let's do side. Let's at least do one side and get the paint where it's gonna live. I might not have enough time to blend the entire thing, but I will definitely be blending the front so that you can learn how. We're gonna blend and ombre these colors together. Isn't that a pretty color? So pretty. This buttercream is just like, I'm, I'm new to it. I haven't used it before. This was a new can that I opened today. It's just so rich and pretty. Really, really liking it. Really liking it. Okay, so let's go to the other side. My wheels, my fancy pants wheels are on another piece. So hopefully we don't have any natural disasters on the floor today. Could happen, but. I have like four projects on the go, hanging out with me on my dining room floor. Okay, so now that I know my buttercream is gonna live in the middle, right? It's living in the middle. See the piece behind me? See that buttercream highlight right there in the front? We're gonna come back to the front and we're gonna work on the next color, which is this gorgeous Rebel Yellow. Rebel Yellow is just a shade darker than the buttercream and together they look super duper good. So I'm gonna change my brush, okay? And I know I didn't paint the inside of my drawers. Somebody's always gonna say, hey, you didn't paint the inside of your drawers. I know, I know. You all don't need to see the boring stuff. I'll come back and do it later on when I'm off camera. Do all the, the touch-ups that need to be done. I just wanna keep you interested. <laughs> Nobody's interested in painting the inside of the drawers. I will also, FYI, on the inside of these drawers, when I am finished, like with all of my furniture pieces, use my big mama's butter to get in here and condition that wood on the inside, revive that wood, um, making it look really fresh and new and smell so good, so good. We need a scratch and sniff option for you guys to smell the big mama's butter because if you haven't tried it yet, oh my gosh, it's like aromatherapy. It's painting therapy and aromatherapy in one. All right, so let's go on to the next color. So I have a separate brush for each color, remember? One brush for each color. All of my brushes have already been dampened with water because I've used them today and washed them. So we're gonna move in to the second color, which is Rebel Yellow, around our buttercream. I'm not going to pull them together yet because we're just gonna put them where they're gonna live. After they all get on their spots, that's when we're gonna start pulling them together. Make sense? Makes sense. I need a ponytail holder. I'm feeling a little crazy today. Crazy hair day today. It's wet and rainy outside in Richmond, Virginia. It is a wet, rainy day. So this buttery, rubber yellow, rebel, say that 10 times fast. Rebel yellow, rebel yellow. That's a hard one. It's a tongue twister. This rebel yellow is gonna go around the edges, okay? Again, not blending yet. Just putting it where it's gonna live making sure that I like the layout of the colors, making sure that the plan that I chose is gonna work for the piece. This is when you decide. This is when you're laying your initial coats down and you're kind of figuring out where everything is gonna go. That's when it gives you your master plan. When your master plan that you're envisioning really starts to happen. It can't happen until you kind of get that base down and figure it out. 
So nothing needs to be mixed yet. I'm just putting it beside each other. It's okay if it's touching. There's no rules in painting. You're just putting down that initial coat because when you're gonna be blending, stuff needs to be a little bit more dry on the second coat. So let's get it where it's gonna go. Any questions? Missing anything up here? How we doing? We hanging in? We hanging in? Use Sands Garden on your French Provincial. Oh, I know it smells so good. So good. I've even heard of people buying um, the Big Mama's Butter that's unscented and then scenting their own, which sounds like a super duper plan to me as well. I mean, anything that smells super good, I'm all about it. Because why not? Otherwise my house is gonna smell like a lot of kids and a lot of dogs. That's not good. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna take the Rebel Yellow. I'm just gonna bring it around and put it in these sections. Because remember, we're adding two more colors to our piece. We're gonna be adding in the Gulf. We're also gonna be adding some gorgeous mermaid tail, but we all have to work up to it here. We have to kind of get our stuff where it's gonna go. So these little nightstands, if you missed the beginning of the video, were prepped with Boss in clear due to the fact that they could possibly bleed a little bit. I just felt like on the lightest color, I didn't want that to happen, so I wanted to make sure that I covered my bases and prepped properly, which included cleaning with white lightning and, of course, my boss. Boss also helps you um, use less paint. It's kind of like a really nice primer for getting your stuff ready for paint. All right, so now that this part is laid out, let's turn it around and do the other side. You like buttercream? This is my first time using it. First timer over here. First time for the buttercream. But I'm liking it too. You know me, I'm usually a wild and crazy kind of a painter. Purples and pinks and wild things going on, but this is a customer request and we're honoring her wishes today. And she already saw my sneak peek because I did do a sneak peek. If you don't follow me on Instagram, you should um, because I tend to get on there and give all of my secrets away. I let everybody know what I'm doing, what I'm working on, how it's going. If I'm gonna try something new and exciting, I always try it live over there on Instagram. So come on over, join me at the Top Drawer RVA and you can get the inside scoop on whatever I'm working on. All right, so let's take the third color. Remember, we're kind of moving in a light to dark pattern. This is the Gulf. Look at that pretty color. Super good, right? Again, another brush. Let's use another brush. <laughs> One brush for every color. And again, it's already wet because I painted today. Surprise, surprise. I'm always painting. It's a painting party going in my house every day, all the time. So again, not blending yet, just putting down those initial spots of color. Laying out my plan, getting it where it's gonna live, making sure I'm covering all of my wood. Looks a little wild and crazy right now, doesn't it? Really does. Don't worry. There is a master plan. There really is. And I know it's going to work. So this is the color that's going to touch all the rebel yellow. Okay. So it's going to go from this buttercream to the rebel yellow, rebel yellow to in the Gulf. The Gulf is going to go to that really pretty mermaid tail. So it's okay if the colors get a little blendy because really in the second coat, we're gonna pull them all together in a big way. But for now, we're just gonna kind of lay them down and get them done. How are we doing? You still hanging in? Are you enjoying yourself? Hello from Greece, how are you? You wish the brushes weren't expensive, but let me tell you a little secret about these brushes. These brushes are handmade, number one. They're synthetic brushes. A brush that you invest your money in is going to perform a little bit better. For blending all of my paints on all of my projects, I only use Dixie Belle paint brushes in a synthetic form. This is my go-to to get a, a flawless finish. The other thing you're gonna find out about these beautiful brushes is that they last forever. If you take good care of these brushes and you clean them and you make sure that you're not leaving them out, they're not getting crusty with paint, you are going to have these brushes for a very long time. I paint every day, every day. 
Um, and, and these brushes, they get a lot of abuse. Look at the handles on this brush. Look at how much love it's had. These brushes go along and long and long. You're investing in your, your efficiency because you're not going to be running out of brushes. You're gonna be able to blend that much easier, so it's gonna take you less time. And you're gonna love them because they are soft and you can cut right into those edges and they last forever. So there you go. I'm not gonna lie, I, I used to think that brushes weren't a big deal until I tried them and then it was life-changing. <laughs> it was like, why didn't I try this sooner? I must have been a nut. And I know right now a lot of the brushes are sold out on the Dixie Bell paint page, um, but here's the deal. If you go to that little link above my head and click the button that says um, brushes, what's gonna happen is you can find at the bottom where you would order, where it says sold out, you can add a little uh, notification to be notified next time they come in. And then you are able to get all the brushes you like and you're gonna want them, trust me. I just ordered two actually, I ordered two more of the minis um, because I use a lot of brushes and I need a brush for every single color and who doesn't wanna paint every single color of the rainbow? I know I do, <laughs> I know I do. All right, so we're gonna jump into another flat medium right now. I'm just gonna come in here with this mermaid tail and kind of touch. The mermaid tail is the least amount used, okay, for this project. It's not the most. It's just like a tiny little touch of mermaid tail on the feet is gonna be enough to drag that kind of palette into the piece and give the depth that I want on the bottom because the bottom is just that little bit darker. So we're just gonna to touch this on the feet. I'm gonna to touch it up. Whoa, we almost lost the table. Minor disaster. I'm gonna to touch it up here. I'm not even gonna be neat about it because this is just my initial coat. If you feel like your brush is getting too contaminated because I do have a lot of colors on here, keep a paper towel handy and then you can blot it off on the floor and get some of that paint off so that you have a little bit more control with your brush. But I'm just kind of laying this mermaid tail down and getting it in the spots where I want it to go. Getting it on the feet. And then we're gonna jump in and we're gonna talk about how to ombre blend these colors together. And you know, this isn't a hard blend, you guys. This is not a hard blend. Because these colors are so close on the color palette, you're able to blend them easier than some of the others. But here is where you might run into some difficulty. There is a lot of detail on this piece. When you have a lot of detail on your piece, it can sometimes be a little bit harder to evenly ombre, you know, that color. Getting it where you want it to stay, and keeping it there because it's harder to work around the ridges um, when you are working with such a detailed piece. I have to stick my head under here now. Let's not put the paint in my hair because I just wanna make sure I got the back part of these feet. <laughs> Give me a sec while I double check my work because if I miss it now, I'm gonna to have to come back in and do it later. But I also don't want the paint in my hair. All right. Okay. Minor touch-ups I can come back in and do when I am off camera. So let me show you what we've done so far, okay? So I'll show you on the, on the finished piece. We did the middle in that gorgeous, really light buttercream. Buttercream is the lightest color that we're using today, okay? So that's in the middle panel. You can see how white it is here compared to what it is over here because in the second coat, I'm going to pull these colors together, okay? It's gonna pull all of these things together and we're gonna mix up a little bit of the green and a little bit of the yellow and the true colors are going to change. But the ombre color that you're seeing behind me, this is the original base. This is the exact same way. You're gonna put those colors down, initially put them where they're gonna live, make sure you've got them in the right spots, make sure you're not missing any sections that you've covered all of the wood. You wanna make sure you get in there and get around your little edges. Yes, I'm painting with my drawers in because this ombre blend is going to work around the drawers. I need them to stay in in order to be cohesive on the piece behind me. So buttercream, rebel yellow, we have in the gulf. I always say in the gulf, but I think it's just the gulf. 
I'd rather be in the Gulf, but it's just the Gulf. <laughs> the Gulf of Mermaid Tail, okay? And yes, these tops are original to the piece. I have not stained them yet. They will be stained with walnut gel stain, um, which is just a little bit darker than this. If you'd like, I can show you. It's just going to be a little bit darker and it's gonna cover up all the yuck that's on the top of these pieces. Gel stain is amazing because the coverage goes on over top of the existing finish. There's no sanding necessary and you're able to wipe it on and cover all of these little boo-boos that are located on the top of this piece. Um, and then you won't see them at all. And I'll seal that with gator hide and then the bases are gonna be sealed with a satin clear coat. I'm also gonna be gilding with gold and possibly some Dixie dirt, but I don't know yet. We will see, we will see. So there you go. So this is step one to the piece. Initial colors laid down. Step two is to blend them together. I'm gonna to turn my camera a little bit more so you can see because I want you to be able to see what we're working towards. So we're working towards this. This is the same colors, okay? This is the same table, the same project. All I'm gonna do on the second coats is come in and make sure that they are pulled together and blended together the way that I like. So I just saw some wood that needed to get painted. A little edge in there. Okay, so the buttercream, rebel yellow, gulf, and mermaid tail all pulled together, comes together in this gorgeous, gorgeous ombre. By keeping your separate brushes, you're able to pull them together, all right? So let's see how these, oh, I just sat on my mic. Let's see how this is gonna go, all right? <laughs> I'm glad you like me talking through, because guess what? I kinda talk a lot. It's my jam. It's the way I do things. If I'm talking, I don't think too much and get distracted by what I'm actually doing here. So I want to keep you, I don't know, interested, but number one, talking is just the way that I just talk too much. So I'm glad you like it. It could be worse. <laughs> you could be snapping me off and turning it off saying, hey, that girl talks too much. But you're always going to learn something when you're painting with me because um, I always take you through an entire finish, usually in one live. All right. Buttercream, Rebel Yellow, The Gulf, Mermaid Tail. In order to pull these colors together, I'm gonna to make sure that I have a piece of paper towel on the floor because I'm going to be blotting off my paint brushes. You cannot have a lot of paint on your brushes when you are doing an ombre blend. I'm going to make sure that this really pretty buttercream on the front has enough coverage. Because it is a lighter color, it's gonna take a little bit more paint than the other colors. So I'm just gonna make sure that I've got enough coverage where I'm gonna work. If you pull a color in like that, it's okay. Pull it back out. If you don't want it there, you can just move it around. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna take separate brushes for each color. I'm gonna go back to the Rebel Yellow. I'm going to make sure that I've covered my wood sections. This is considered the second coat. This is considered the second coat of paint before we blend together. I'm just gonna make sure they're all down in the spots that I want them to be. Okay, so now I know I like that yellow, I like that buttercream. The gulf is gonna come in here, and I'm gonna make sure that all of my little corners are covered. This is the time to like look underneath, get in all those cracks and crevices. You don't wanna do an entire blend and realize you missed like a whole edge or something, because then you gotta fix it, and that's not fun. So flip up your hair, get in there, get into the corners, make sure that you've covered that entire area. Okay. So now I know that I've just done a color of buttercream, rubble yellow, the gulf. I'm not going to put more mermaid tail on there. Mermaid tail is really dark and I don't want a lot of dark in this piece. I'm basically gonna be pulling these other colors over top of the mermaid tail. See that corner in there? See that little corner behind my head? It's not true mermaid tail. It's just my base for all of my blending. I'm gonna blot off my brush, okay? Blot off your brush. You don't want too much brush paint on your brush and you're going to start to pull these colors together. You can use your spray misting bottle. I'm just going to pull this yellow and buttercream together. That's what I'm working on right now. I'm not going to stick it in the green. I'm just working on this middle blend. If you feel like your brush is still getting too much paint on it, take some off with that brush, that paper towel on the ground. Small, short strokes 
are what go are going to help you. See how far down I'm holding my brush to gather the control. I went from painting like this to painting like this. Okay, you're holding it closer. You're allowing your, your light touch to feather these colors together. Okay, so that was the buttercream brush. I'm gonna move into my rubber, rubber yellow. Rebel yellow, why can't I say that? Rebel yellow. We're gonna take this and we're gonna to start to just gently bring it down and move it around. I might have to do this two or three times to get like exactly the look that I wanna get. That's okay. It might take a couple times. Again, blotting it off. Okay. And I see a spot, I'm gonna go back with my other brush. Just kind of feather those two together. There was a spot there that I was not happy with. Okay, so now I'm gonna go with my The Golf brush. Again, blot it off on the paper towel beside me. Super light, super light, you guys. Very light, feathery touch. If you're not light, your strokes are gonna look too dark. They're gonna look too thick and you're not gonna like it. It needs to stay light. It needs to stay airy. And you're still pushing off that excess amount of paint onto your paper towel. Okay, so this part right here, I'm happy with. I'm gonna move down. You can hear, you can hear how light I'm holding it. It's like just flipping across. I always like to put a little darker in the seams. I don't know why, I just do. Again, blot off that excess paint. Okay, so I'm seeing a little bit of yellow in here that I don't wanna see. Let's take that out. And go back to my yellow because I see another spot that I'm not happy with. It's okay to go back and forth with those brushes. There's, they're not contaminated so bad that you can't fix it. You know, if you see an error that you don't like, if you wanted to add more yellow coming down, that's okay too. Okay, so now I'm gonna go to my mermaid tail. That's on this brush. Now I can pull that mermaid tail up a little bit more. I just didn't want the whole thing to be full of mermaid tail. I want it to be like the tiniest amount of mermaid tail up here. So that's just meaning that I'm not even applying more to my paint on my brush. I'm just gently touching. Okay. Voila. This is the blend that I'm going for. Now you can see how all three of the four, four of those colors pull together. The butter cream in the middle, okay, pulls in with the rebel yellow. The rebel yellow takes that gulf and just kind of knocks it down a little peg because it went from being, you know, pretty bright, pretty blue to more of a, a soft green. On the bottom of these edges, I have that really pretty mermaid tail. So now you can start to see this blend. See that happening? Hi, Linda, how are you? See that pretty blend? This is what we did on that little piece behind me. Okay, let's work on the front. Let's turn the table without losing it here. Okay, so I'm gonna work in the front before I blend this together. Even though this part is done, I'm gonna continue over from the edge because I told you it's a little bit harder to blend on a piece that has this much detail. It just is. It's not, it's not impossible, it's just a little bit harder. You just have to take the extra few minutes to make sure that your edges are all meeting and coming together the way that you want because you want everything to be cohesive. You want that blend to come together in a really seamless way. So let's work on the front. What do you say? You still hanging in with me? Am I missing any questions? Anything of vital importance? I'm sure somebody's answered it along the way. Thank you for the gorgeous colors. Thank you. All right, so we're gonna go back to the middle, okay? We have the buttercream in the middle. Coming around with the rebel yellow, I wanna make sure that I've got enough buttercream on the center of my piece. 
like I told you, that buttercream is just going to take a little bit more paint. The lighter colors always need a couple more coats. So we're just going to make sure that we're covering all the wood. Should I paint this entire floral design on the bottom in gold? Or should I just hit it with the gilding wax and making it look shiny? What's your opinion? Paint the entire floral thing gold as an accent to match the hardware? Or just like gently hit it with a gilding wax? Let me know. Drop your poll in the comments below. Tell me if you think Gold Digger should be all over that gorgeous flower or if I should just be more subtle and do the gilding wax. Okay, go either way. I'll take a vote. You need to let me know in your comments what you think I should do. I know you all have an opinion because you always let me know. <laughs> I always ask these questions and there's always a heated debate going on in the comments below. Sometimes I hop on here and let you guys pick all the colors. Okay, so we're just getting this back, covering all this area. Make sure I've a nice even coat. And if you feel your brush dragging, hit it with your water. Thin that paint out a little bit more. Pouncing it into all the details. Just making sure your second coat is looking. Looking smart. Looking the way it should. And then we're going to bring in that rebel yellow and I'm going to show you how we blend it. Okay. Let me just turn it a little bit so I can see straight on. Sometimes I miss things if I'm not looking the right way. And when you're blending, if you don't do it right the first time, you're gonna have to redo the whole entire thing. So <laughs> give me a hot minute to like get in here and make sure I got all my edges. Okay. This is good for the arm muscles. This hurts the arms. <laughs> All this blending, it's my workout. That's what we'll call it, right? Paint therapy slash working out. Okay, there you go. That's the buttercream. Let's go into the Rebel Yellow and just put it where it's gonna live. And you always wanna reference your other piece that you're working on, making sure that you're, you're see here, I pulled this yellow in a little bit more and I pulled it down. So there's some more up here that I didn't have on my original coat. I need to add that in because you don't want to come back in and go, oh, I, they don't match. You need to cross-reference. You need to just kind of make sure that you're, you're doing the same thing to both. And then open my drawers when I'm done painting so that I know that they're not going to stick. Okay, so now the yellow is where it's going to be. I've got a very similar match to what I did over here. I'm going to come in with my The Gulf. Okay, and we're going to put it on the edges knowing that I have to ombre these together. I'm just not going to do it yet. Remember to look back at your other piece to see where you're going to put it and that you're not painting a different, <laughs> you want them to match. You're not painting two different pieces. You're painting the same thing twice, which can be a little tricky sometimes, but we're gonna make it happen. Okay, so this is the part I'm gonna work on first, okay? I'm gonna add a tiny bit of my mermaid tail up here. I'm 
blotting off. Don't forget to keep your paper towel handy. You're gonna want to wipe off your excess amount. You can't have too much paint on your brush, so this is not gonna work well. I'm just coming in and making sure that it's a nice blend. And if you touch the other side where you were before and you need to fix it, go back in and do it right away while it's still wet. Going back to my Rebel Yellow. I don't want to start blending and getting all crazy until I know I've got this section perfect. Okay, so now when you look at this edge, <laughs> watch, I'm gonna turn the whole thing so it'll fall over. When you look at this edge, you can see that pretty blend works out well. It comes together, it pulls both sides together. Nothing crazy is happening. It's all matching well. So, oh Lord, let's turn it a little bit further. So, now I know that I'm gonna start pulling this and then I'll work on that section and then we'll come around the corner. So now I'm still with my Rebel Yellow brush because I don't want too much blue on my brush. I just want to kind of pull that blue together in here with the yellow. Keeping a light hand. It's okay if I get paint up here, I'm going to wipe all this down and paint it later and cover it with my really pretty gel stain. Okay, so I'm going to stop. I need to double check. When I look at this piece over here, I see more yellow that I'm missing up here. I need to add more yellow because it's not looking exactly the same and you want them to kind of come together well. So you just need to be aware that you need to match. And when this dries, it does dry a touch darker than what you're seeing when it's wet. Okay, this part I'm good with, this part, I need to just fix this one little section. And I'm good with that too. So it's a matter of just working in small sections, getting the paint to go where you want it to go, referencing what you were doing to the other piece because they have to match. You can't just jump in all willy nilly. This is a set. You need to make sure that your set is going to match and work together. Again, if you have any questions about blending, please drop them in. I'll come back in and add them answers when I'm finished. I don't like to do a lot of, um, hey, how are you's on here? I like to just like stick to the business at hand. Stick to the business. I feel like I need more yellow here. And then I need a little bit more. So see how I'm working kind of like in sections. Once I get a good section going, I kind of move along and then I leave it alone. You can't overwork your paint too much because you're gonna to start to pull it back. This is pretty darn wet um, because I'm working quickly to show you how I'm doing it. Can you see? There you go. So because I'm working quickly, it's not getting fully dry in between coats. Um, so I'm, I'm, if you overwork your paint, you're gonna pull back what you've already done and then you're gonna be stuck with a mess because it will pull back if you work too quickly. So just kind of keep that in mind. I am working kind of double speed to show you how I ombre my colors together. Truly, you probably wouldn't be working this quickly. You would probably be going a little bit slower. It's like speeding, speeding along. Remember blotting off your brush, adding more water, taking the time to come back and look at your previous piece, making sure that you've got a good match going on. Where's my mermaid tail? I see something.
You can see how hard I am on my brushes, how rough I am. It's no joke. These brushes, they take a beating and they just come back so perfect. And such nice clean edges. Okay, so when I look at the front now, I'm seeing a pretty blend. I'm seeing pretty here. I know this yellow dries darker because when I did the first piece, I was surprised at how dark it actually did dry. I know it's gonna dry a little bit darker. So now I can turn it and work on this corner. How we doing? How we doing? We're hanging in? Are you still enjoying yourself? Let's see, is the mist spray I'm using just water? Yes, ma'am, it is just water. These are water-based paints, and me using a spray misting bottle filled with water is just allowing them to become a little bit more movable. They can just move that little bit easier than if I wasn't spraying. All right, let's carry along here. I might be able to blend this whole entire table with you here on the Dixie Belle paint page. Who would have thought? I thought I was only gonna get the front done. Magic, I tell you, it's magic. All right, I see one little tiny piece over here that I just needed to fix. Okay, so remember we had mermaid tail up here? Okay, that's a lie, I see one more piece that I need to fix. <laughs> Give me a hot second. I can't, I can't move on until I know I fixed it because it will drive me bananas. Okay, I fixed it, I think. Yeah, I fixed that, we're good. We're good, we're good. Okay, so we're gonna move on this little section. So I have the, in the middle with the rebel yellow, and I had the mermaid tail at the top. Now I wanna dump a little bit more mermaid tail on my brush, because I just wanna darken it up a tiny bit. Okay. I'm not adding new paint other than that mermaid tail. I'm just moving the paint that I already have on here around a little bit. So it's not true mermaid tail anymore. It's, it's a mix of the gulf and mermaid tail. But I just wanted that depth. I wanted that darkness up there and the same with down here. So I'm gonna keep the mermaid tail kind of be like the last kind of come up and just give that little bit darker blend. So I can feel too much brush, too much paint in my brush, wipe it off. Get it off on that rag on the floor. Some of the girls use a rag and like wipe back fully that way. I just use a paper towel. Lightening your hand to get that nice little fade going on. I'm gonna add a little bit more yellow here. It got a little bit too green. And it's okay, keep going back and forth with your brushes so you get it exactly the way you want it to go. I'm almost done. Okay, I can live with that. So this little piece is a section for me. This little piece is good. We're gonna turn it and work on the last flat piece. So I'm gonna go back to my buttercream in the middle and making sure I have enough paint in the middle to cover that wood because you don't want to add a full second coat for the rest of the colors, but the buttercream is going to need that full second coat in the middle for this little highlight. Something is on there. Okay, that's good. This part, I'm good with. Let's play with the little yellow. Get that initial yellow where it's gonna go. Trying not to mess up that, that section that I just did, right? Gulf because I'm going to have to mix these colors together and it needs to be a little bit more wet. Okay. I'm actually going to put a little bit of peacock up here, or sorry, mermaid tail up here 
and of course down here on my feet. Okay, so now your choice. You want to go inside out to pull them together or you want to go outside in. Totally up to you. You pick what you like to do. I always like to start with the lightest just so that I can kind of keep this brush less contaminated because the light is harder to hide any of the boo-boos, right? Okay. Switch to the Rebel Yellow brush. I feel like I need a little bit more down here. It's getting a little dry. What do you guys think? You think you could try this little blend? This little ombre blend? It's not hard. It's just one of those things that, you know, practice makes perfect. I do this, like I said, every day, all the time, all the time. So it gets a little bit more of an easier feel for me. I know what colors kind of go together easier sometimes, um, but if you stay within that little kind of color palette where the colors aren't too different, they're still very similar, you're gonna be able to get away with less work. You're gonna be able to get away with less worry about your blending. It just comes together a lot easier. And look, I can see a yellow. Fix that. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to the Gulf, wiping off my brush. I'm not adding any more paint, I'm just wiping off. my yellow. Feel your brush dragging, make sure to spray it. A wet brush moves easier on the surface. And just creating that little fade. What do we think? Are you liking this? You liking this little blend? I know I'm not looking at you, but I'm concentrating. <laughs> I need to concentrate. If I don't concentrate on what I'm doing, it's gonna get all, it's gonna get all messed up. This, this is good. This I can live with. Let's work a little bit down here. Back to the yellow. A little bit more on my brush. Just want more pure yellow in this spot. Sit back, pull your head back every once in a while. Make sure you double check. Sometimes it's easier to see when your head's further back. One little spot over here. Okay, this is good. What do we think? All of that work. Good? How's that blend? Feeling roasty and toasty in here, it's getting hot. It's getting hot. It's hard work focusing on all that blending. I know I missed 17 million questions, but that's okay. I will come back in later on and answer them. Let's see, you like the color combination? It's really pretty actually. It's very soft. It's very um, feminine, but yet still interesting because you kind of got that really pretty mix of the greens and the blues. It just turned out really well. So the middle is the buttercream. 
This is the rebel yellow. The rebel yellow came up into the gulf. And then there is a touch of the gorgeous mermaid tail in the corners of each of the piece. And then this way, when you have it all together and you look at it and it dries, the yellow actually deepens a little bit and changes the piece a little bit. And you're able to, I see a spot I missed. I have to fix it. You're able to see how that really pretty mermaid tail just kind of pulls it all together. I know it was kind of an unexpected surprise to put such a, a deep color at the bottom down here, but having that in the corners just kind of makes this middle become a really pretty highlight. What do you think? Was that hard? That wasn't too hard. Just blending 101 in like one hour and less. You can totally do this. Keep a separate brush for each of your colors. By keeping a separate brush for each of your colors, you're not getting contaminated, okay? You're keeping your brushes clean. You're able to work in a manner where you're laying down those initial colors. You're not blending them together until the second coat. When the second coat comes along, you're gonna use your spray misting bottle filled with water, and you're gonna pull them together. You're not going to overwork your paint, but I like to start when I have a light color from the middle light out. This way the middle stays cleaner, stays brighter, doesn't get all mixed up and muddled up. This part I want to get mixed up. This part I want to pull together. So now when this dries, I will have a matching set. It's hard to tell because this is dry and this is not. This will darken. That beautiful rebel yellow becomes more bright when it's dry. It definitely lightens up the, the middle. It feels like if the buttercream gets lighter, the rebel yellow gets a little bit darker. So the tops, I'll clean off all these edges and I'll be coming in and staining the top with my gel stain in walnut. But this, y'all, is as far as I'm gonna take you today. What do you think? Do you like those colors together? Super pretty, right? Super pretty look. So by taking your time, keeping your separate brushes, making sure that you're picking colors that are closer together um, rather than you know, purple and orange, anything that's crazy and hard to blend is gonna be harder to pull together, especially on a small piece with lots of detail like this. Don't forget to tell me, I want you to chime in and tell me if you think I should be painting this entire little wood molding that's on the bottom with gold digger, should it be completely gold or should it just be accented in gold? I want you all to put your votes in and let me know because I don't know yet. <laughs> I'm gonna have to sit on it for a little while and live with it. Oh, come on drawers, don't do this to me now. No fighting at the end of the day. So then you're gonna to wanna to open your drawers so that they don't get sticky and dry, like this one is getting already. I'm not gonna fight with it now. I'll fight with it off the camera. Open them so they don't get stuck and dry, making sure that your edges are all painted really nicely and nice and smooth. You can use your tiny little, let's see if I have one over here, sanding to come in when it's dry, give it a slight sand to smooth it out, make sure that everything is nice and buttery soft then you're going to be able to come in here and add your gold details, your gold gilding wax. You're going to want to use your metallics if you're going to put any metallic paint. I'm going to be coming in here with my applicator pads and staining the top. But that is it. That's Blending 101. I hope you try it. Um, and take a minute to come over to my Facebook page. I am running a little giveaway on my Facebook page. I'm very close to 10,000 followers and I would love it if you would join me because when I hit 10,000 followers, I got a present for you. Some lucky winner. You have to go over to my Facebook page and check it out. Is going to win um, a brush and a magazine. <laughs> and I will send it to you as long as you're located within the United States. So go check out my page and follow along. I am Melissa from the Top Drawer RVA. I'm Dixie Bell's newest brand ambassador. And I'm always sitting on the floor, getting messy, playing with paint. I am live every Wednesday at 3 here on the Dixie Bell paint page. Thank you for joining me. And I will be back next week. But if you want to follow up, see me stay in the top. Talk about what we're going to do with the gilding waxes and all the fun things. Make sure you come over to my page, the Top Drawer RBA, and follow along. And we will paint these live over there and finish it up. So have a wonderful day, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Happy back to school for those of you that are new homeschooling parents or virtual schooling or sending your kids schooling. We're all on the same team at the end of the day. And uh, you deserve a pat in the back because it's, it's all a bit of a wild, wild ride right now. <laughs> I feel you. I know what it's like. So... I will see you next week, Wednesday, 3 p.m. on the Dixie Bell Paint page, and we'll have a new project to play with. Take care, everybody. Bye.